Something I think that uh, I know this has been applicable to me over the last four or five months is uh, just getting used to not being in control. And I think that's something we've all talked about, whether that is something, you know, whether it's in your, your personal life or home, things that have been impacted by COVID that have caused you to not have a grasp on things that you normally would. Just the unknowns that that has created and how we've all worked through that. We, we understand from the school setting, you know, the challenges and and what we're trying to do and and so uh what i what i'd like to do is and i'm going to kind of throw this out there and then i'll go a little bit further and maybe i can come back to a few people who might want to participate um you know a lot of times we can kind of focus on what we don't have control of instead of focusing on the things that are in control and obviously the the segue here to the devotion or the promises that we have um as, as christians the promises that god gives us in his word things that if we ever needed something that we could say, you know what, no matter what's happening around me, I can grab onto this. Yeah, I think even sometimes we find that, um, you know, I find at home, even with everything at school, I'm trying to get things done, and you just feel like you're never quite getting it done because there's still so many unknowns. And so at home, I found digging up weeds and planting plants and things that I can get done and look and go, wow. I did that, I had control, and look what happened, it's complete. And I find myself enjoying that, even if I'm trying to get roots out that are under the ground, and you're this big around, and I've got a pick and swing away, but you know what, I can get that out of there, and it's something I had control of. And so, I think as Christians, a lot of times we start thinking about God's promises after we're kind of in the mode of, kind of, I need some promises to hang on to, instead of, Walking in those promises all the time when we enter challenging situations and we claim those promises. A lot of times, I know I do this, I'm on autopilot, I'm doing my thing, and then all of a sudden I realize I need I need to claim a promise, but it's because I've kind of been trying to do something on my own. So what I I'm gonna I'm gonna just kind of we're gonna talk about God's promises and God's God's word is full of promises. And so I'm going to ask you just to be thinking, and, and I'm going to come back to anybody that wants to throw something out there, whether it's a verse that's a promise that you claim, whether it's a truth, whether it's um, you know someone in the Bible that, that that God showed Himself faithful through that situation. You know, there are promises in the Bible that are not meant for us, but we can see how promises were fulfilled. And, you know, or promises that were made to the people of Abraham. You know, God promised Abraham. Was not meant for me, even though I benefited from you know his seed and Christ and our, my salvation. But that was a promise to Abraham. Um, there are promises that have conditions. There are promises that God says, "Hey, if you do this, I'll do this. Um, trust the Lord with all thy heart, lean not until thy own understanding, and all thy ways acknowledge Him, and what He will direct your paths." Well, those those other things that came first that you know we're, we're responsible for, but. Promises are, are important, and so maybe a, a few of you could be thinking of, of, of some promises just to share with the group something that, that you claim. Um, and Glenn, I'm going to use the one that you're going to probably mention because it's our theme for the year. Joshua 1.9, um, have not I commanded you, be strong and of good courage, be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed, for the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever, whithersoever thou goest. Overcomers, that's our theme for the year. Joshua 1 9. And I think the other promises that that I, that I that I wrote down, of course, the Bible is full of it. I mean, God's word in itself that is a promise. Um, from 2 Timothy 1 7, for God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Um, being confident of this very thing that he who hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. That's Philippians 1 6. Romans 8, 28, Romans 8, 28. You know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. Wisdom, James 1, 5. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God and give it to all men liberally and afraid of not, it shall be given to him. So we, we think about, we think about the, 
promises in God's words. Anybody have one that you want to throw out there? Something that for you is, is a verse or a scripture that you claim is a promise? Anybody want to throw one out there? Yeah, Today? I'll, I'll share one with you, Matt. The, that I've lately landed on, and even over the last few months, was um, Lamentation, which is old school, but 3 to 25 to 27, where it says, God proves to be good to the man who passionately waits. To the woman who is diligent, who diligently seeks, it's a good thing to quietly hope, quietly hope for help from God. It's a good thing if you're young to stick it out through the hard times. And it's just really saying, you know what? It's okay to be in your own anxiety, in your own moment, but as you wait, God still provides us. Yeah, it's good. And as we think about as we come back to school, as the president of administrators, we've been talking about what those first days look like when we get everybody back together. And I think we gather yeah, a lot of things for us to talk about with procedures, with COVID, what's the new reality of what school will look like at NCA. But to be able to start before we do anything, um, to, to rest in the promises that God has for us as Christians, as, as, as a Christian, his school, um, our mission is, is all based on resting on, on that promise. And so that's, that's what we want to focus on. And maybe looking at promises even one step further. And I came across a devotion that I thought was really good because we kind of tend to think, when we think, here's the promise, and I claim it, and good for me. I take comfort in that. But the devotion, the focus was, do we, do we make these promises a habit? And is it a habit that then propels us to action because of that promise? Instead of just, oh, I can claim this, and, you know, like that blanket you put around yourself, and, and there's nothing wrong with that, and you should do that. But the idea was, so what does that promise do to tell you? So if it's, you know, Philippians talks about, um, my God will supply all your needs according to the riches and glory in Christ Jesus, Philippians 4.19. So it's easy to say, God supplies my needs. Oh, I don't have to. I mean, I'll just trust in Him. But does that promise prompt me what? If, I, if that promise that God's going to supply my needs, how can that propel me to action? Well, maybe it means I'm generous with my resources. I want to give to other people. So there's a promise that, that gets me to act on, whether it's my finances, whether it's my time, my talents. Um, so it propels us to do them to action. Um, blessed are the pure in heart, um, for they shall. What's the second part of that? So, pure in heart, about purity. Talking about, you know, do I guard my mind? Um, it's part of that promise. And so I never really thought of promises taking it that next step. And so I, I think it's going to be important as we as we think about, um, we start the school year, as we're talking to our students about acknowledging, yes, all the uncertainties around us. And as our teachers, you know, as we help our teachers, um, to know what does that look like as they present that to their, to their to their students, but that we're also resting in God's promises. That it's not about fear. We acknowledge what's going on, yes, but here's an awesome opportunity that is thousands of kids are going back to school in different school settings, and we have an opportunity at NCA to be able to to talk about yes, yeah, social emotional wellness of our faculty, of our staff, of our kids. But in the perspective of that God, God's promises are true, they're real, we can count on them, and uh, that we get to do that in NCA as we welcome our kids back. And, and I think um, that is such a powerful opportunity that we have. So, um, again, just holding on to God's promises, do we grab a hold of one of those, those promises, make it a habit that propels us to action because of and then the difference it makes, even if you take a promise and say, you know what, I'm going to live by this one. I'm going to claim this one, and I'm going to see it through and watch God. Not only, I'm claiming it going into all these things, not trying to claim something after I'm in, at the end of my own self, and now I'm trying to claim a promise as a rescue, but I'm, I'm claiming those promises and they're happy enough. So just uh, something that, as I heard, because I've spent a lot of time in, in kind of woe is me and pity parties and, and uh and that's, that's not where God wants us to be. And again, I, I love the verse that we have for this year that's going to be on our, our T-shirt. So there's a shameless plug for, for purchasing a T-shirt from Glenda. But Joshua 1-9, and not a community be strong and good courage.
be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed, for the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. So let's pray and then we'll get to us. Lord, we thank you for today. Father, I thank you for um, your school. Father, I thank you for um, the leadership, Father, the people in this room, Father, that just give up their time and, and Father, being away from family and Father, just being in the position that they're in, Father, um, for such a time as this. We thank you for their leadership. Um, we pray for um, this wisdom as we as we move forward, Father, that everything that we, we do, Father, is to honor and glorify you, Father. And even as we work through difficult situations and topics and decisions that, that have to be made, Father, I just thank you for the spirit of unity, even in areas, Father, that we might see things different. Um, Father, I thank you for our families. I thank you for, um, Father, just encouragement in, uh, as we've gone through all of this and that we just recognize that we want to honor you and do what's best for our students. And so we just thank you for that spirit of cooperation. We thank you for just the thousands of promises that you um, provide us in your word and, and examples of uh, promises that um, you've manifested to other people, just ordinary people that are flawed, uh, just like me. And so the promises that we have, Father, that you will um, see that work done in us. So bless our time. I pray for Matt as he's, um, Father, just taking care of church thing so i pray you just be with him i pray that we do it marvelous as she's traveling and um with her with her granddaughter that you just give him a great time of, of, of a special time with, with um, her husband and, and with her and that we just continue to, to guide and direct our school in jesus name we pray amen yeah. 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 marvelous they are are they seeing my rush more i saw a picture posted of devil's town devil's town today so Flashbacks of the post encounters. It seems like a lot of people taking that that kind of trip this summer. So that's, that's awesome. Thank you for that. Or, yeah, I was thinking, I was thinking about. Uh, it's interesting when we were little kids, or we watching our children. It's do you promise? Can you promise? Like as kids, it's almost like born in us to you know, work on work through promise. You know that whole concept and probably learn probably learn a little bit from the kids and and thinking about the promises of the Lord having that kind of faith so good good stuff thank you so much uh also dr wisdom is with us virtually tonight so i texted her to make sure she was all set and so she is joining us online this evening as well so we'll go ahead and move into our agenda hopefully everybody got that board packet and if you need a pretty copy i think kelly took care of us in that way too so um, i am not aware of any changes to the agenda additions changes Anybody? I'll just entertain a motion to approve that. Motion to approve the agenda. And second. Okay. Okay. And all in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed to that? All right. We're, we're cooking with the answer. So moving on. I think Vicki said good. Did she approve? <laughs> we're going to go with that. We heard ding in the room. So we'll. Vicky is with us. All right. Uh, there. I am. <laughs> you, you have a sound that you didn't even know you had. It was ding. So we're, we're glad you're there. We're glad you're there. Uh, all right. Our meeting minutes from last time from the July 9th meeting. Um, I took a run through those. Anybody have any questions, thoughts, changes, edits, additions? <coughs> Okay, that's okay. Well, we can uh, ask for somebody to uh, move to approve those minutes, please. To approve the minutes. Last second. <laughs> Corner is alive. So. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Same sign. All right. We'll move into our reports and. Back. Back to you, sir. Um, just some things since the reports got out, just continue to have meetings. Um, we meeting with uh, our nurses, tenders, and really helping us with trying to line up our protocols for our nurse's office. How do we whip our nurse's office? How do we keep our nurse safe and not on the quarantine list? Making sure that um, our nurses have the proper equipment, that they're not placed in, uh, in that position. Um, Recent meetings with the, the health department and the superintendents have been, have been good. I'll just kind of throw in there that they 
had predicted three weeks into the masking ordinance that they were hoping that they would see uh, the impact of that. And they shared in our meeting that they did see some encouragement as far as the impact that they believe that the masking would have. So they've seen evidence of that, even though in our surrounding areas there's still still some stuff coming up. So, but anyway, just a lot of uh, good feedback um, with the, the health department, probably also letting schools know that they probably need to help with contact tracing in most cases enough, just because they just don't have enough people to they they've got the funding to add but the responsiveness the schools will need to be moving on you know, notification and so they've got some protocols for our school to be able to do a, like a three-hour contact tracing certification and so we'll be looking to help um, with that so we can do that and know how to contact and how that process works a lot of things going on working with Glenda. We've got the Liberty Auditorium's um, pews that are getting ready to all be moved next Wednesday. So, anybody, maybe even if they're watching at home, would like to volunteer Wednesday at 8 a.m., we're going to move them all out into the parking lot out front. And when Glenda put that on there, we got slammed by a lot of people. And you know, you thought everybody, you thought they were all going to be gone within a minute. And then, uh, they're, they're the they're not standard and as they go to the back they get wider so if someone was wanting this many 12 foot ones um they just they're not set up that way but um monica liberty her, her dad tom Sinner, has uh, gone over there and started to take them apart so the ones that are even 24 feet they have a seam and they can the trim can be taken off and you can pull them apart so people can come and take them and so we've got some people interested the plan is to get all those out um, we're, we're ordering chairs or any of those chairs aren't in. We have chairs here at the Aeroport that we can use in that space temporarily. And it'll just give Michael and actually our school flexibility with that space, which is honest, whether it's required, whether it's for our teachers coming back and our meetings to space people out. It could be an alternative learning environment for kids in class that can come down and space them out and take some mass breaks. And so it's going to be really good. We're going to leave the pews in the top just, just to keep that seating. Um, but, uh, but anyway, the next Wednesday at 8 a.m., put them out there, and then what doesn't get taken, probably the next afternoon, we will either be trying to dismantle them and throw them in the dumpster, we do that, or we might just put them up in the burn part of uh, uh, the chapel, and then they can just sit there until we get into that phase. So that'll be nice having that space. So we appreciate Mr. Center's work in uh, doing that. Does that do anything? Are those there? bolted to the floor I guess. about 10 of them were still bolted yeah most of the ones that even weren't bolted but we found out as you pull them up you can see that the bolt that came out of the concrete had been just bent over so we'll just need a few people you can pry those up with a claw a hammer and then bend it both ways and then they snap off so as long as we get those out of there but that'll be such a great great space so just yeah. a lot of a lot of preparation but that's kind of what's so is that is the carpet mm -hmm. it is so it'll stay yeah, right. Yeah. Chris, yes. Great. I saw the post on Facebook, so man, good job. Oh, and there's gosh. actually we have some views. And we didn't put that out, but there are two benches, but they're not straight. They're kind of like altars. They've got a slight curve to them, but those are those are available too. So no problem. We'll see. We'll see what happens. I have to go on Facebook today. Wow. Yeah, Glenn has been it's been nonstop. Yeah, that's great. Great for a good, clear weather day. Yeah, out of there, right? There's a, a youth camp that's supposed to come tonight. I'm watching to see because it's supposed to come over there. Yeah. At an expected time. And I would really like for them to go to some place like that because then it, I don't know. Yeah. It makes me feel good that they're not just going to the top. Yeah. So hopefully we get a bunch of them. If not, I've got about 25 people on this that are interesting, especially now that we can take them apart. Right. Are you going to do a donation bucket? That's a great idea. Thanks for your labor dropping under <laughs> yeah. Like the pound shirts, vote for your favorite. Yeah. <laughs> yes. 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 Hey, that's great. That's I wonder you know, I wonder how that would how quickly that might go. And there is obviously a demand for it. So all different all different reasons too. One yeah. as an artist, he wants to recreate one. One wants them because he's a woodworker, he wants to take them apart and shoot the wood. 
uh, one month, you know, then they want to put them different places, uh, just all kinds of different varieties of uh, people at one kind of cabin out the lake, they want to come in, one month they put it on their deck, you know, just all kinds of varieties of uses yeah. for church pictures. Good news. <laughs> That's great. Good news. Now, yeah, is there any uh, training, COVID training for the nurses that we'll need to take, or are they, I don't know if you can say there's, I mean, there's different, there's all kinds of training. That yeah, we'll there'll be, there'll be a, we'll, have, I mean, we'll do a, a basic COVID training for all our faculty just on prevention awareness symptoms. There's and a then, whole yeah. nursing association manual that was like a part of that Missouri. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's some good there's resources. The School Nurse Association, National School Nurse Association. There's a lot of resources. And, and some really good flow charts to kind of here's the different tracks. If this right. happens, you know, go here, and then but very clear and easy to follow that will be for um, and Emily's good feedback. I think probably the, the things that we've got to work on having ice, a place for isolating the student, and so we're looking to look at what that looks like in this office um, and what it'll look like over at the Liberty Nurses office to get a student that they're symptomatic to get them isolated. And then as well as training for the administrators who will be in the position of assessing and the nurse in the building. So that's a whole other step that we'll be working on. Something like a movie ET. Do what? Something like a movie ET bubbles around. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Shower everybody said it would be okay. <laughs> Watch. Because all it goes to the, the floor. So, well, and I think. If, if there is a, a silver lining to having to put a medical team together, it's that we'll have a good resource too. You know, that would be great to have maybe working with, with Kendra to kind of help coordinate if we have. I'm sure we may create our own manual to a degree too of, you know, just things we're, we're learning about it as we go. So that would be, yeah, that would be awesome to have that medical team to lean on. I'm sure they would be happy to continue to help. So a great question. Um, as we mentioned, Marlis is traveling this evening, so um, she she got her report submitted. Um, I will note we are going to be talking about pit hours uh, in just a few minutes. We'll we'll have let that come up later uh, as we talk about COVID nineteen a little bit further. Any questions or Matt? Anything that we need to add to her report? Any questions about anything that? Marvelous submitted or plans. I mean, we discussed the recommended update to the network that you include. Um, that comes up. Okay. Is that, is she, I, is that in her? There's like a question that you would think. Yeah, we've got that in new business. Uh, okay. Yeah, we'll do that. I didn't realize I actually did that. She put that in her piece as well here. So, yes, we will, we will do that in just a moment. Any other thoughts or questions? Um, more or less is going to. Okay. All right, Mr. Tuck, we will throw things back to your corner of the world. I don't have any additions at all. Does anyone have any questions? So. And when we get to Coach Crane's time, I've got some stuff to share. Okay. Anything else for Mr. Tuck right now? Okay. All right. Mr. Hour, anything to add to your no, no issues? Okay. Just get some cues out of it. That's right. That's not all that's happening. I know that's true. <laughs> <laughs> no, that is true. Anything from the world of elementary? Yes. Uh, I'll, I'll kind of do the admissions report at the same time. Yeah, perfect. Uh, she that report was done on August 1st. And five days later, it is changed drastically. We have 30 in process total, 24 girls are in elementary. We have had so many applications that we talked about it and decided that we were going to have to put a cap on some of the classes because of the size of the rooms and the desire to spread them out as far as we possibly could. So we have capped junior K at 12, kindergarten at 17 apiece. This is her room. Um, first grade and second grade at 20. And we have applications to fill every one of them. We have seven, we have four in kindergarten, seven in first grade, and seven in second grade. 
So lots of screenings, lots of testing, lots of interviews. We talked with uh, Delena and I and David and Matt and so on. Um, talked about maybe making being careful that we're we're not getting a lot of people that are but as soon as spring go over back up again at home. Right. And uh, so we talked about that and, and screening those out and that kind of thing. And what we're finding is that almost all of well, all the ones that I've talked to so far, and I think pretty much all the ones that Delena has allowed to go through the application process, we're hearing it over and over. We thought about recovery for years, and this was just the push we needed. And so, and I, I, so far, it seems like everybody is, is really here because they want Christian education. And thinking about it, and this was just, you know, what they needed to get that push. So, that's where we are present time, working with the teachers to get as much space as we can, and I think capping it to those will be good. Yeah, and from a teacher standpoint, we're good with that number. We'll be okay with that spot where we don't need to just have a space. Yeah, I mean, the minimums are fine, but that yeah. is fine. If it's the space, yeah. maybe it was nice. That is great. <laughs> we got you can tell on just where people they they have heard about I guess we've got a few doors but for oh. most of them in the Springfield, like right in the Springfield area. Um the ones that I've seen so far, yeah, are in the Springfield area. Um, but yeah, they there's a lot of them that said, well, you know, we, we thought about this two years ago and then we thought, well, you know, we'll give it a try, but we're really not satisfied. And that's I'm not I'm hearing a lot about that. Years. You know about somebody went there and so so her report with 609. So we're going to be right now we're well, over it's like 630 something. I'd say that was, some of those don't work. I mean, I think realistically 630 would be easy. Uh, yeah. Even if you have a few that don't quite make. That I think it's even higher than that. Right. I, we just thought maybe we're she getting getting the end David, and it's a change. In fact, she gave me my report in my She gave me a report this morning. I was still looking for the senior packet. I'm assuming that all 7%. Just that we were like at what, 7% to yeah. withdraw? Yeah. That's all I'm assuming came after spring going out there. Yeah, we had we had zero uh, in process in elementary before that announcement, and now we have twenty. I think yeah, wow. she said like last year this time of year you were looking maybe at seven or eight in process yeah. Yeah, this time of year coming. Wow. So that's it. And I think I'm sure. That's yeah. incredible. Wow. So it's a little crazy. What do you do? Thanks, yes. That is well. The other thing, the conversation has been if there if it's a reaction about. Masks or virtual learning, you know, what that could change for sure. A lot of them, yeah, we just don't know. Right. But they've done a really good job of the right kind of explaining it and making sure people realize that, yeah, as far as that. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Wow. Well, keep up the good work and the good news. That's that is awesome. That's exciting. The Lord knows exactly who needs to be here. So. We'll say yes and amen to that. Okay, Miss Glenda, anything to add to your report? Where are you been up to? <laughs> well, uh, I met with that committee today to plan our, I finally uh, let go of having a physical banquet. And so I met with the team today to have a virtual one that's going to be having, I'm just telling you right now. So, I'll tell you more later. Put it in the notes. It's going to be epic, right? Put it in. Yes, it is. It'll be awesome. Well, I don't know, just more of the same. Just, uh, we got a, a business, I don't know what I'm talking about, but uh, in the business team, me and Matt, we've got a revised flyer based on maybe what we're doing this year without the banquet. Uh, I've already got a presenting sponsor. Um, we need to get tomorrow, and so. Uh, yeah. Get the new, new. Yes, so we got, uh, I ordered 500 of those. 
And so did you do kind of like what Jeff has? The, is it called a buff or a gator? Yeah, or what do they call those? Yeah. Gators. Yeah. It's buff when I wear it. <laughs> so, yes. I'll have to remember that. <laughs> yeah, with those orders, that was a, a real tricky thing because every time I try to order that out something, and yeah. so, so that's just, and we got the little get together coming up in another week or so, and yeah. trying to get that all planned out and socially distance and everything. So, so. Will the gator give it away? Uh, yeah, we're going to give them to everybody by the fifth grade and up. For, uh, and then we're making a little heater room, like a something for that pack for the little ones who have that something for the first day of school. Oh, and yeah. So we're working with the pink cord. That's neat. That yeah. Means. So they have something. So everybody has something. A miniature mask. Yes. No. <laughs> no, it's a little thing, though. So it's like I'm a warrior or something like that. And, uh, Big signs. I'm trying to make the first day of school really fun without touching anybody. You know, working on some of that with Enric, and um, we're getting cardboard balloons because you know we want some balloons and just trying to be creative and make something fun that you know so everybody we can. I have a really strong uh, parent team this year. I've kind of revamped it. I don't know if I told y'all this or not, but I really was praying about uh, what direction to go. I just felt like the Lord wanted me to um, really. Concentrate on loving our families. So we have um, a really good set of families that they're going to try really hard. We have Cassie, her, his wife is going to head up our family relations committee, and she's going to try to, uh, through that network, find ways to love on our families throughout the year, whether it be a card or a phone call, or and then also they're going to do something monthly for the teachers, whether it be a just a paper or uh, something. We're working all that out, but we're going to try really hard to keep our, our community, family, uh, you know, focused and try to build that community. So that, I'm at a train, you know, four nights of that, so we can put that down. Well, that's thinking it. outside the box. That's what yeah, we're that's what we're trying to do. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much. Did you ever read in your report that you buy a trail while you start being yeah. Like if they want to buy one. Well, we're working on a store. Okay. Right now, I just bought some, it's like one store, uh, and there might be one. I don't know. I bought some extras, but um, I'm working on a warrior store that I want to have open after the uh, same day, and it's going to have like maybe a water bottle and a buff or a gator and some things like that, or a buff and jet models. And, uh, <laughs> Uh, so we'll have some things like that where you purchase a new company. New feature for you. Yeah. yeah. How many yeah. pip hours is that now? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. It depends how long you stand there like yeah. this. <laughs> <laughs> so we got the one teacher. I'll go get it for you, right? Because you guys are going to love it. And, um, we're gonna, I'm helping student council with that because the uh, student council is going to give it to the new counselor, and I thought she was kind of overwhelmed to start. So I took that over. So we're going to have some things like that. 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 So that I can get them at the, at the little get together to meet trees so that we can get those done before school and not have so much traffic during school. Try to do that. And uh, then we're working on opening up like a, a store, online store after Labor Day with other items and some new stuff. But we'll have a covenant buff or mask or something in there that we can buy. So we can start out the school with the one that we have to wear at least one that we can have. All right, cool. Yeah. Good stuff. Okay, Mr. Kelly, what's happening in your corner? I'll give you just some quick themes. So we're still um, getting the building ready for school prep activity. A lot of it has been kind of retooling the classrooms and then helping go through and pull a lot of items out of the halls. If you walk the halls, you see a lot of things still in the halls. Um, but trying to thin the herd a little bit, if you will, to try to make as much space as possible in the classroom. So. Um, we're going through and storing, making a big 40 foot container out here. You may have noticed if you haven't yeah, seen your head out of the storage, big 40 foot storage container. We had set out here, throwing a lot of items there that can be in some extra classrooms. We're going through and making that space available so the teachers have what they need. Still close by, it can't be directly in the room. Working hard on that. All the floors are pretty much done. You might get a chance to look your head in the gym. Because the gym floor looks wonderful. Um, that's Wait, there's a sign that says don't enter. I don't know how to cover for you, Coach Kelly. Coach Kelly, you can do see your head in the door. He looks really nice. Oh, 
lay out the columns. And uh, uh, it looks really good. So, so the building uh, refreshes and all over the really good. Uh, almost done with that. Very short staff yet. We've got a couple of positions available for custodians. So spread the word. They are posted out there. But um, right now, there's not a lot of incentive to work. And so I'll leave it at that. But if you know anyone who is looking for work, uh, we would gladly uh, accept them and uh, take that into account. Uh, as far as technology goes, I think we're pretty much up to date. We've been working really hard with the CARES Act funding, uh, a lot of meetings with uh, SPS and uh, principals and math team about uh, what I actually want to submit for. So, a lot of furniture, uh, a lot of technology, a lot of different items, medical supplies. Uh, just whatever it covers, we've been going through and itemizing those things and submitting those. And so we're looking forward to when those things start rolling in. We know that everyone else is, is shooting for those items as well, so we do have a chance to some of those. Uh, the re-campus looks great. Road project is officially done. It's actually growing grass. Uh, in front of the building's being cleaned up. We've covered up a lot of the old windows on the burnout part so that it looks a little more uniform. Uh, we painted the windows around the inside of that five, six car lines that are all kind of uniform gray. Um, so really tried to clean that up quite a bit, and it's looking really, really nice that we've worked on some of our after schools over there and that and then the field out back. I think that's going to be really nice. Um, so just just working through Oh yeah, the water fountain. So we have 10 water fountain model filler stations that have come in that are going to get installed. So every single water fountain you see will soon have a, a new, completely brand new water fountain that they bought a filler on top. So those are all going to be replaced. Uh, We're still going to have the fountain on the bottom. Still going to have the fountain on the bottom, but the bottom floor on the top. Yeah. Most of those now probably be cat and mom, so the cat and mom still really yeah. accessible. Yeah. Well, uh, we're going to cap the water fountain portion of it all, but it'll still be there functioning. That should be that's, uh, Several of them are old, but we thought it didn't make sense to put a brand new bottle of water on top of the water fountain. Yeah. So, uh, we're going to replace some of those. You're not supposed to wash your bottle with that part. Not generally. Yeah, the idea is you know that. You know that would happen. Yeah. You know that. Um, yeah. So, so we've been previously working on um, all of these facilities things. Uh, we try to back up and support the academics and making sure that everybody's having what they need to get started. I do want to get kudos to uh, Linda's office really put in a lot of extra work this summer, uh, answering the phones and the front doors and things like that. And so we really appreciate them for that. Um, picking up the slack, um, working on the app. Kelly's been working on the app, and Joni Crew has been working on the app, and Lynn and her team. Um, the new school app is where the family app is we're calling it as it comes to fruition. We're very close, it is um, almost nearing birth. I think we're ready to take the next steps now. So, um, soon and very soon, we will have the Escape Family app to show off, and uh, very proud of that. And, and now we're going to be So, there's, yeah, there's a lot of exciting things taking place. Um, in that room as well. But as the first week of August is officially here, people are returning. Um, you know, a lot of a lot of folks are coming back to something that has been born to them for a few months. Um, a lot of folks have been living it for all of the months. Um, and so as those personalities are, are coming together, we're all working through uh, logistical things that come up. But um, I'm just glad to be in the environment we're in. And I don't think we can be Christians and chicken littles at the same time. I think we're, we're either Christians, we either have that faith. Um, I don't think it looks good on us to be a chicken little if the sky is falling. So um, it's just refreshing to be a part of something that's progressive and moving forward and looking past. Absolutely. We're at a moment in time, and so I'm very proud of what we've accomplished this summer. Yeah. We've accomplished it. So I'm very proud. And summer is never hang out and be bon bons anyway. Not and this has been no except extra. Yes, yeah, that's been extra box of one now. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, thanks for all your work, man. It's it's a different place with you with you here. So thank you, thank you so much. Um, we touched on admissions. Uh, Mrs. Pruitt took care of us on that. Is there any any other questions about? I don't know that there's anything else. That's plenty to plenty to talk about with that. So we'll we'll move over to uh, fine arts. Is there anything in the world of fine arts? As we said, in the band room. It's, no instruments flying at this point. So, uh, back to Mr. Tuck for yeah, just athletic kind of, director report. A couple of things for Coach Crane. Uh, I just want to commend him for his hard work this summer, too. Uh, he's been developing the mitigation guidelines for our activities and athletics and stuff, which is crazy. Uh, you know, he's been in contact with Michigan with uh, 
uh, the conference and different schools that we play and things like that. So uh, he does have a back to school communication guideline for athletics and his development. That will go along with his handbook. Examples that we have online. And then also, we'll be sending out uh, before Monday just some guidelines to parents and students. Uh, and in those guidelines, we talk about transportation, how we're going to handle that, how we're going to do our screening, face coverings, cleaning of equipment, uh, hydration of our players, uh, how we're going to handle our spectate, spectators. You know how many can lap in and look in the map with a lot on that today. As did him, I and Lindsay, we sat down and we did a lot. Uh, hours of conversation, our analysts, you know, this summer for all this kind of stuff that everybody's done. So, uh, anyway, I appreciate Eric's work and that will all be taken care of before we go here. So, something that's kind of I forgot to mention is that happening in our conference, the schools that are in our conference, um, we have one school, School of the Ozarks, who is a lab school of College of the Ozarks. So College of the Ozarks makes a decision regarding their extracurricular activities or their athletics to school. School of the Ozarks has to abide by that. So when CFO got put into their fall sports have been coming to put to spring, but they're not doing anything right now. So that means the lab school they have no sports. So one of the schools in our conference, SFO, won't be participating in volleyball and junior high basketball. So they've had to shut everything down because they haven't followed up the college students. And so that's, that impacts our schedule um, a little bit. But the whole fan thing is kind of tricky trying to decide here's how many people you have in our gym, how do you monitor that? And so kind of letting other schools know basically you get maybe two two tickets per per player and then uh, we'll have to send those out to them and they'll bring in the music to get in and, and then I think on our side of it we should be able to get everybody we need but yeah. it's just the things you gotta keep track of and so that's that's what all the schools are dealing with. So and I was just gonna say no other schools I guess have, in our conference have said anything about not participating. Not I'm not participating so then and just in letting those schools that are coming in start they, I think we talked about the vouchers that we send in, like their tickets, also put them on their masks to make sure they remember they're coming in spring, but they're going to have to sure ask for I don't know if that would be reciprocated as far as they'll go to team. If they're not under any guidance, I don't know if they'll, they'll do that or not. But the COC, the Springfield schools, basically have said they'll get X amount of tickets for the, right, for the visiting team. And then I think their gyms are bringing them out they have to worry about their own crowds, but they are limited to the visitors. Yeah, on our end, um, Eric's kick, Eric's kick around. I, I think the number, I think volleyball we'd be fine. I think junior high basketball, you get into, and you have boys and girls playing the same night. You've got yeah. different ones. So I think what Eric would like to do is have parents at least, whether it's using a Google Doc or Sign Genius, just let them know, hey, here's how many people we have. So we can roughly, I mean, I think we'd be fine, but just so we can. Be on top of it, yeah. and uh, we'll probably go to the administrators and probably have a little counter, you know, like you in church, kind of just to, just to kind of make right. sure. Because I think what well, we've got to remember, let's say there is a case through the tracing, it comes out, hey, they were at we come to the cabinet at a game. Yeah. We want to be able to make sure that right. we were doing everything right, and that also means besides limiting how many people are in, but probably setting X's on our bleachers every other row, just spacing and telling people, hey. Family unit, you know, we sit on the X's. Yeah. So that'll be an added part of it. We just want to make sure that we're doing everything. We are soccer or outdoor, I don't, we're not going to worry about that. And in fact, outside, they can even take their masks off if they're, if they're social distancing and everything. So I think soccer will be fine. But volleyball, I think, will be fine. Basketball, I think, will be fine. And then we get high school basketball. We'll just see where things are at. And uh, we're looking at, you know, Brian's got things set up that even if schools are limited on who can come in, we can stream. We've got a camera, so that might be the thing that schools can still, grandma and grandpa can still watch, still watch their kids play even if they can't. So, so a little advertising on there. Scroll, scroll, scroll. Yeah, hey. That's Jeff can advertise the best. I was asked by the Cardinals to buy a seat at the Seahawks. 
part of the Certainly create a pop-up character for me to set this up. Okay. I can't physically be there. I can't really turn the game. So if you can't go, they have a pop-up sleep for you? Yeah. No, no, no. Then you they make a pop-up, they make a whole body. They just do like a view. Yeah. Oh, so like you watch it from home with your I don't know. Your phone will put your game on TV. So it's eBay. Oh, okay. It's happening. So cardboard pop-up pop-ups for me. Actually is that here? You mean here in town? Or sorry, it's in St. Louis. Yeah, it's only I didn't know. Yeah, it's happening all over. So they're, they're all trying to get your dog. Dogs, get your dog hanging out in the stands. I mean, it's well, it's a it's a cool cutout. Yeah, I don't know if that's sorry. So they can't go, but they can come and visit. Yeah, 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 they can come you can see yourself in the stands. Yep. <laughs> and the face looks good. Thank you. Thumbs up. Thank you. 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 Okay, good stuff. Well, we will, maybe we'll be this creative the rest of the meeting, right, as we move into old business. So, um, we will quickly, uh, we'll first kind of touch on our, uh, the only thing in old business that we may be here for a few minutes. Um, wanted to give a, an update from our committee and uh, just let you know, I, for those that may be watching that aren't aware of the committee, we created the COVID-19 committee two months ago maybe now or a little, little longer than that it's hard to hard to remember how far back that was when we got that got that group off the ground uh, so uh, a group of us from the board along with all of our administrative leadership and, and uh, our administrators staff as well on that group and then a subcommittee of uh, the medical profession a lot of our parents more than i ever realized are in the medical world and so kendra has helped us uh, lead that medical subcommittee and, and we've been meeting jointly and then and then uh, also in just uh, some medical meeting group meetings uh, on the side as well and they getting back together uh, as a as a COVID 19 committee so um, have really appreciated all the help it has been as we were talking with Mr. Kelly about his corner of the world and, and all the rest of us, it's been extra, but it's obviously been necessary. The committee has been um, so helpful with all of the time, all the texts, all the calls, uh, emails, and back and forth. So it, it has been super helpful. Um, and obviously, we've been we've been talking about. Um, I guess a month ago, we were. We were right on the cusp of the ordinance in Springfield happening, and uh, so here we are a month later. And, and as Matt said, we're I guess at least three weeks into into that, maybe even four now into that that plan. And so we haven't officially. We I think everybody has seen kind of the back to school plan, um, and it's whatever. It's it's if anything is ever changing, it's probably been that document that that we've all been walking through and working on, uh, but we haven't. We haven't really taken any action as a board um, to kind of decide where where we want that to go, but we, we have been talking about it a lot. Just via email in terms of uh, some of the verbiage that we wanted to share for tonight. So we did, we did submit that, Matt sent that over today, and I, I think I had a copy of everybody's seat in case you missed that uh, electronically today. Um, so what we, uh, our plan, has been to uh, have our grades. And if you just as a, I guess as a backup quickly, the ordinance would if we are if we are looking at the ordinance, um, really the Liberty Campus group is is what I mean. Everybody else is, it's understood kind of who is masking in the ordinance in terms of the Springfield ordinance. But for us, the the topic of discussion has been our, our Liberty Campus and making sure that that environment is uh, it's just a little bit different than, than this building 
and so with with the help of and a lot of back and forth just with our medical committee and the COVID-19 committee just talking through uh, does it make sense to mask at that campus everyone because there are a group of fifth graders of course and sixth graders that don't don't hit the 12 year old age and so uh, the the recommendation of of the committee and again that has been with with getting we even went back to the medical committee to make sure we had clarified that sent an additional note to the medical committee just to be sure that i think the meeting before um, that we had gathered we, we did before we sent this note we didn't we didn't feel like we went back and just specified we're saying liberty campus with all the masks and medical team what are your thoughts on that and so um, i think even today a couple of responses and, and pretty much down the line, uh, everybody was was in favor of, of and it just makes sense uh, to that to that group for us to mask the entire campus at Liberty. Uh, can I, can I add? Yeah, that? absolutely. And when we think about the fifth and sixth and that campus here, you've got the elementary and the high school. While they're still in the same building, there's a definite. Um, in terms of those learning spaces where you've got high school on one end that, that are masking and, and elementary. So in terms of over there to have part masking the part not when they are sharing restrooms and there's one set of restrooms downstairs you're gonna have kids up and down. They're a little bit more on top of each other over there. They don't have that 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 horizontal spread that we have over here. And so um, and, but like Todd said, I think at the beginning of the school year, you would have six or seven, six you know, total in the intermediate that would be at the age to mask. You'd have all your seventh and eighth graders already masked, all your faculty masked, over half the building. And, uh, and I think the point of the task of the medical community was, but it just makes sense if, if with the masking will, will help. But again, our goal is to stay in school, right, and prevent spread. And so when you've got a campus that was half and half, which is right up with me, we went back to them and they were all in agreement that that made right so and i think we we all want to be we all want to be sensitive to what what we are you know we have seen in the ordinance i think i don't know that anybody has read it word for word but maybe some of us have i know i know several of us have probably done that by now and there's you know there could be discussion about do we if we mask at liberty does that does that veer from the mandate or the the ordinance and yes it, it would uh, and so I think I think that is is something that we I think we did a, a decent job of making making everybody aware of that it, it would it would say that we would be varying a little bit off of it, kind of putting making an NCA uh, addition to that you know to that ordinance um, just to be sure that we we cover that campus uh, I think it's probably also just just fair to say. Uh, you know, my hope and prayer would be that there wouldn't be. I think, I think many of us have talked about we don't want to add on to the ordinance. There are just so many things that can come with that. So we want to be careful about adding to it, though I guess officially with this we are. Uh, but my prayer is that there there aren't a lot of other outlier things that well can we can we do this to you know from from whether it's our families or whomever might want to you know might want to say well if we did that this makes sense this move uh, to our medical committee and so that that's why we wanted to, to do that with you know with kind of an understanding that we would try to hold the line on on the ordinance at this point so um, we've got that we've got that for you I don't I won't necessarily read it all uh, out loud to you are there let me just point out a couple of highlights and again this was a great collaboration um, everybody was kind of chiming in with just thoughts or and looking at the CDC information too was obviously involved in that process um, just related to to kind of speak to the group fourth grade and below uh, 11 and under or for us fourth grade and below is, is the probably more accurate way to say that I think our recommendation you know would be as we kind of looked at that verbiage would be that that we would recommend that the board would would say that we strongly encourage masks for for that group as well but it is certainly at the parents discretion um, and again that was that was aligned with with the medical the medical group as well i think in general i don't want to stay that long but i think the medical team um, early on 
before the ordinance, the medical team was really, really were not thinking that we would consider masking that lower grade, any of those lower grades anyway, from the beginning, even before the ordinance. So uh, I don't know that anyone was was ever against, you know, if your kid's in third grade, feel free for them to wear a mask. Am I not stating that correctly? I think, I think everybody was fine with that. You know, I, I guess the, the reality of it will be, how does that work in the classroom? And hopefully, you know, if anybody would like to mask their younger children, totally fine. Hopefully they can handle that. Well, I, I saw an adult yesterday with a mask that was really grimy, and I was like, oh boy, that's, He's been touching that mask a lot. So there is a lot to the mask. None of us, you know, are just loving the, the mask wearing all the time when you're working and, and in the environment he was in, he was moving furniture. And I was like, dude, your mask is a little bit rough today. But anyway, so hopefully, hopefully everybody, our, our kiddos and the staff and team will be okay with that. And, and it will be, it is a lot to ask everybody. And we're all walking through that together as a community anyway. So any, uh, let me, be quiet for a second. What what thoughts? Um, anything that anybody would like to, to ask or or add? Uh, I guess I didn't note. We did also note down below that anybody visiting the building, we would require them to wear a mask. And I think our plans to still ask a few questions at, at the screen as they as they come into the building, visiting, or even even our volunteer team will be working with them. Um, so hopefully everybody had a chance to come look at that verbiage, and, and that would be the recommendation of the of the committee. Do you have anything to add that I missed, or any thoughts, Matt? Questions? Well, and before they say, I just want to clarify because I didn't when I put the when you go to the CDC, the committee felt that we should use the same verbiage and what was we felt it was important for the board to make a decision about yes, fourth and. Fourth grade down is not going to be required to mask, but it's right. here's what we want to communicate about our, our stance on that and whether we were going to use, you know, what, what language are we saying? It's just up to the parents' discretion to leave it at that, or are we going to say, you know, just like the CDC has, has stated that they, they recommend masking, there's places that the CDC says they strongly encourage. So those are the two words really we were asking for the board to. Is a, you go to the the link where you can go and see, and it says recommends mask ages two and up. So it says recommend right before the actual age, and then another place it says strongly encourages masking in general. So if the board wanted to decide which um, which we would use, if we use fitting with the age, they said they, the CT recommends masking ages two and up. So if we were going to say, and that's why we included the verb in there, which we thought was good. Um, yeah, I brought that up, but it's good not just for us to say, you know, here's, the, here's what the CDC says. Right. But still, ultimately, it is up to the parents' um, discretion on the moment. And so that was what we wanted to present to the board. Um, of course, any other questions regarding masking? Any feedback that I got from families in terms of on whatever side of the masking issue they were on, right. we forwarded that to the, to the committee and uh, a lot of good feedback from our families in terms of what what they felt should be done, and so we make sure that the, the, the committee saw that um, just to hear. Um, and, you know, most of the feedback that we got, obviously, since our stance has been when the plan first went out, that we would not be masking elementary. So most what folks have sent the people that you know, probably four to five, as far as different families that I've heard from, obviously are, are saying that they they would ask that we would mask elementary, but that's because right now we're not. And so that's the feedback. Um, we made sure that, that that all went to the, and I think some of them were even, you know, directly contacting the committee as well. Right. So that's kind of that's kind of where we're at. So we just wanted feedback from you all on the on the proposed wording that would just go into the go into the plan. Feedback, questions, thoughts. <clears throat> the, the parent does the elementary kid with a pass. The kid doesn't. Used to get here to go to the again. How much of a burden does it have the teacher? In that case, you know, when the, the parents call and say, Why was my child wearing their mask? And are you thinking about the lower grades? Yeah. So if a third grader mom says, Jimmy, take your mask, be wear it, and they get in the door right off and in the desk. I think the parent has to realize that 
That's all I'm going to teach her. Yeah, we need to get ahead of that, I guess. So, so we, and I had probably I had that. I was talking. I was down at the elementary. I was talking to one of the teachers about about the you know we will have. We we're talking about we're going to need to go over with all our students the way to find your mask, how to take your mask off, what. And so it will be needed to do that probably with all students, even if some of the elementary some do have them, some of them don't. But the conversation was in terms of you know, with the parent probably communication with with the parent and the teacher just discussing what that's going to look like. I think we're encouraging if we do have students um, wearing masks, if it's the just buff or whatever that, that they're using, that it's something they can put up and then take down and it's not going to be exciting. That's what's going to be the issue we're going to be finding laying around. And then just also, like we said, trying to, like, hey, we'll, we're going to be talking about masking um, because I think we also need to prepare our teachers when you have kids bringing up, you know, why, why is Jeff wearing a mask? And, 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 I, and, and I'll, I'll say this, I've, I've gone places wearing my mask and being a rule follower, and I go into church, and I walk into a room, and I'm the only one wearing it. And as a 48-year-old man, <coughs> I was a little, that made me a little uncomfortable. I felt like the, the odd person, and so I think we're going to really need to get ahead of when we have classes that, and it'll be interesting to see the percentage of elementary students that do come with masks, and that our teachers are prepared. Um, how we how we talk about that, how we direct those conversations in terms of the kids that wear versus the kids that don't, and that it doesn't become you know well, they're this, and, and so I, I think we're going to have to work through that. But just the fact that someone will be coming with them, that we're going to have to kind of work work through that with parents and just let them know. I mean, the teacher might say, "Yeah, I know we came with the mask, but." He wasn't, he wasn't wearing it, just let me know and have the parent have this conversation. So, but well, that's right. a good point. Training or coaching follow the same purpose that we put in here. So if you don't want to wear a mask for the teachers, coaching would say you recommend that you wear your mask and then but other than that, there's really not the accountability like there is at the higher levels, right? Yeah. I think I would just suggest I don't know the but will be at the parents' discretion to really do it. Um, you know, because it feels a little bit like CDC has <laughs> guidelines for the two or whatever. Recommendation. <laughs> recommendation. Or no more actually looking at that. So if we're going to play on both sides and say, we're following the CDC guidelines, but it's at the parents' discretion. I just don't think that that's It is at the parents' discretion. I, I had a secondary question to the communication enforcement, but to that point, it's specific verbiage. You know, it's up to the parent, but I don't know that it just feels a little bit uh, like on both sides of the that line. And we prefer that we just stick with what we've said. We're going to follow the guidelines of right. the CDC, which would include, I don't remember if it's strongly recommend or, or strongly encourages, I would think we're strongly encouraged because there's probably plenty of people that are wearing masks on everybody, right? right? But we can't confirm that everybody's leaving the house with a mask. Right. You know, uh, but from a clarification, I think if we, if we leave that term in there, everybody's going to say, uh, a lot of people would say, I decided not to. So it's that something like strongly encouraged but not mandatory, but not required. Not required. I just leave it as yeah. yeah. And here's I just want to make sure on the and, and I'm I'm finding the way. Way. It just if someone goes back and, and what and I know we're just wordsmithing. Yeah, but, it's just but in, in the CDC part, if you want to stick in terms when they're speaking specifically to that age group that you've recommended, then the other part where it says strongly encouraged, they're saying while, while masking is strongly encouraged, I think it goes into a part where they're talking about situations where someone might not be able to wear a mask. So the strongly encouraged is, is the overall, the recommended, I'm just saying if you want to go by the letter of this, what the CDC is speaking to, is speaking, saying recommended when it says two years of age. Uh, but again, it's, it's totally, I mean, I, I think the CDC's position is that they do strongly encourage it, but just if no one goes to that link, that's where they'll see it. So but it's still, and I think the parent discretion, when we were, when I was first drafting this, was just without trying to take a stance on either way until we work through it, um, just based on what the information from the committee was. Right. 
that was that seemed to be kind of a, a very neutral. Um, of course, that was we all know over the weeks, depending on how you how you view all this. I mean, that's that's changed in terms of what the recommendations have come out, um, especially with kids and masks from the, from the CDC and um, pediatrics and all. I mean, they kind of went to different places, but but uh, but I'm open to whatever the board would want to probably want to do that. My my recommendation is just for the period. Came to fourth or strong period by the NCA board. Yeah, I, think, I still think we should decide if we as a board strongly encourage or recommend uh, or don't want to say anything. But I agree with Matt after rereading the policy. I misinterpreted the where the strongly encourage was. I think it strongly is. It does say strongly encourage is face coverings, and we are complying with that. And then, it, like exactly like Ben said, it does recommend the uh, for two years and on. So, right. Supposed by my revision be what was originally proposed by us, but the case before are recommended by the board. Here. I mean, the board and the administration make lots of, lots of recommendations, like get your car like 10 minutes before the beginning of school. Yeah. Like, no, like, <laughs> that is that. You know, and we don't see that into those, but to figure what you want, it's at the next discretion. Yeah. So yeah. there's, I just don't think that those extra yeah. words are quite needed. We can use that for mass and pull all the way up. But no, I agree with that. I agree with that. That kind of just needs an out that we as a board are saying this, but really not saying it. So recommended would be what one thing would be recommended would be to say EK through fourth are recommended by the NCA board. Yeah, period. Thoughts on that? Picking out the parents' discretion, picking Matt online with us. If you're, any thoughts? I, th I really think we should say strongly recommended. Ooh, that's oh, hello. <laughs> so the Dang it. Recommend, you, get, you get the option of recommend or strongly encourage. Not strongly recommend. <laughs> That's, that's yeah, no, it's <laughs> it's for me. It's it's the best option is to say strongly recommended, um, and uh, that also gives us the opportunity if things go south and we have to require them, we've we're there. We're we're right one step away from it. That's just me. Okay. Thoughts on that? So strongly recommended. That's the Vicky hybrid. <laughs> Any other thoughts? Any other input questions? Okay, I know one other, and maybe this is a, a sidebar to figure out, but you know, I know that there are, for example, I think in grants, you know, they, they have started to kind of talk about like, asthma is not a reason to not wear a mask. I, I wonder when we get to the point of any medical you know, if we have a student, I don't know how acutely we know anything about asthma for any of our kids, but if, if that's a reason that they cannot wear a mask, you know, I guess we just handle those on a case by case and be sensitive to that. I have to deal with those Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I think that I think that's something that will that will come up, I'm sure, and, and we can handle those. I don't know if shoes are a Active to that right, right. Yeah, it's the the uh, the face covering. I think it's probably Jeff. Like you probably read it more recently, maybe than I did on, on reading the CDC stuff and we'll handle the ordinance. But um, shields are. If you've seen anybody, I was at an office the other day, and it was actually nice to be. Able, I was masked all the way, but she had just a shield, and it was a nice interaction. I could see her face and everything, and, and I I would think our our teachers might. I like that idea, but I know that there's probably concern about is that really the best? I know there's a lot of yeah. health department back <laughs> when I asked about that, right? Schools, because they do have questions coming up. Right. Their their first say would be wear a mask. And they said face shield would be you know, would be an acceptable alternative. Right. Now the science behind I don't know, right? Just because there's not as much research on the effectiveness of the shield. Right. They prefer that, but they said they should say in the ordinance it was the right hand in a school setting. 
But whether you're oh, yeah. buff or shield or mask, I guess. I did see a lady the other day in the store, and she had a full like bandana thing all over, and just her eyes with a shield and a mask. So she had a, she had a, she had a coat. So we may see all of the above. We may see all of the above. Okay. Well. Um, I think we kind of landed on strongly recommended at least for that for that section. So um, entertain a motion to um, however you'd like. You don't have to phrase the entire the entire uh, paragraph half a page there, but would welcome a motion to approve the committee's recommendation. Uh, because this will be in the student handbook, right? It'll be in our plan in the in the. But I think but other, that's yeah, the handbook recommendations that the plan will be part of our handbook. Well, it'll be a separate. It's right now. It's going to be like an addendum. Yeah. To that. Yeah. Yeah. And I agree with you, Jeff. I think a moment ago you mentioned like even in in word and deed, we are kind of following this. Even so, I, I think yeah, anywhere this could be, it, it'll, it'll show up a lot of places. So. I think I think the thought here was to, to for the board to act on it uh, just just so that so it was clear that we were because this is kind of coming out of, it's kind of, you know not something that that we're the the plan has been kind of a moving or not moving it's draft. It's been it's been a draft. So I think to I think to uh, approve this verbiage will will give it some give it some oomph and, and a covering you know for our team to work from. So are you just approving like, that verbiage or the whole reentry draft plan? I don't I think. Know. I mean, I think the, 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 entire plan. Plan, the plan is still being so it's yeah. and it's going to be fluid up until the beginning of school, right? And so, and you have the plans that the, the principals are working through. So, I think this would be a step um, approving the version of the plan. It's kind of not saying you have to approve the whole plan. Um, I mean, it's pretty much in its final. There's some things we got to go back and change because of updates. There's some entry yeah. changes in terms of how that's phrased. So I wouldn't approve the whole time. I think this part's important just because every community districts they've had to right, kind of walk through these conversations and kind of say, okay, here's what we're going to do. And, and schools are all over the place. You have some schools that are masking all the way down. You have some that they're not masking anybody. You have some will mask when we get to this level. Right? We'll mask when the health department tells us they think we should. So it's it's really all over. But each board's had to make that decision. For, for themselves, and so I think it's good. I kind of kept it neutral because I, I wanted the board to kind of make that you know, whatever they wanted that verbiage to be as it relates to even if we're not masking elementary. I think it communicates you know, what the board stands in terms of. And I think there'll be folks that hey, the board recommends it. I'm going to do it. There'll be some that they feel strongly not to that they won't. Right, and they can still they still have that choice. So you, you certainly have the support from the board, right? But I think that's the administration. Communication not necessarily requires the motion from the board to support the communication. I don't know how that's a policy. You guys can decide if you don't think you need to approve it. But I think there are some things that, as an administrator, you like to have that the board okay. make a decision in terms of how that's, you know. I don't ask for that a lot, but this is one of those that <laughs> I'd like to. <laughs> I, I would like to add, though, um, on the handbook changes that I think are down on the new business coming up at, in the next line item, there is a uh, legal description that was written. And the second to the last paragraph incorporates the reentry plan into the handbook as, as part of the handbook. So when you had said something about is that part of the handbook? That's where the motion. Yeah, that's. Yeah. I think that's what. Right, and I didn't know that you were going to put it in it, but I would say as a part of that. The the other part of this is for the, the what we'll talk about for that document yeah. as far as that acknowledgement. I think the board saying this is what 
we feel is important that we're going to go by the CDC recommendations in terms of what we're following as a school. I think mean, it kind of ties, you know, the board has made the masking, you know, that elementary we're saying we, whatever you guys decide on, recommended, strongly recommended, that kind of connects that piece in terms of what we're acknowledging to our, to our parents that, hey, here's the plan we put into place, and that plan was uh, approved for you know, some of those components, whether it was masking. Hey Matt, uh, real quick. Sorry, um, can you hear me? Okay. Okay. Um, I would strong. I, one thing I'm thinking about is with this plan. If you don't put it with, I would not put it in the handbook because this plan is going to be fluid probably all year. You know, there's going to be changes that we're going to have to make to all of the plans at the institutions that we're with. So I would. I would keep it out of the handbook and I would let parents know that while this is our plan at the beginning of the year, this plan does have fluidity with it because it's going to need to. That's just just a recommendation. Yeah. And I don't and I don't know the the, the legality of why it has to be. There's a reason why Christian recommended it be not necessarily incorporated but linked to as an addendum to the handbook is because when a parent signs the um, Officials agreement, they agree to the policies in the handbook. And so, since we did not incorporate that into the admissions agreement because this all hit after everybody enrolled, it, it is a way to link those policies as, as a requirement. Does that make sense? Right. Yeah, I get that. I mean, and uh, I know we're jumping ahead to the new business, so I guess for maybe, maybe we should go through the new handbook rec revisions recommendations and then see if we double back on this. If this has this independent motion is needed, or if it can be captured in that, that handbook revision. How do we get to the new business? Question mark. Yeah, I think that's how we get here today. Yeah. One other thought would be, as Vicky was was saying something there, copying on, do we need to potentially verbalize an end date to this? We don't really talk about a time frame, uh, or not that we need to say a date, but do we, I know subject to changes there, but do we need to, uh, I guess, if, if the Springfield ordinance, let's say that they do some kind of revision to it in a few weeks, and it either lessens the groups or changes. You know, I don't know if we, if y'all, are we going to link to stay linked to the ordinances all the time? You know, along the way on this, I don't know. I don't know that we would necessarily say that we want to do that. I don't know that a date is or any kind of verbiage about timing is really required for now. I think we would probably come back under the subject to change section probably of this and recognize that that we need to. You know, revisit it if, if the city if what they do, uh, but just to kind of think that we might not always ditch our wagon to. I mean, for example, if they back off of the lower, you know, say say they went to, we're going to go with fifteen and above. You know, are we going to stay just you know that kind of thing to think about? So, and then if they if they left, and he was going to, but we're going to talk about the handbook. I think uh, that the handbook. So yeah, we can because we don't have any other old business. So yeah, we can just go right over. Uh, I think that's a good a good thought, Jeff. To kind of just talk that through because it is part of the Kelly. Do you want to you want to speak to those handbooks? Well, changes? it just um, that is a, a kind of a lengthy legal description that was written by our attorneys, and the only thing that was added to it was just incorporating the, that paragraph into the agenda. Or, as an addendum to the student handbook. So, um, sort of, the, I don't think you want me to read that. Is, you know, it, I, is it an actual waiver that's, that doesn't have been signed, or just an addendum to the handbook? It's just an addendum because in the, in the enrollment agreement or in the admissions contract, there's a clause at the bottom that just says you will adhere to, as a parent, all the policies of the school. So that's why he's recommending that these be incorporated as part of the student handbook, the policies and student handbook. And if someone who's already enrolled 
to not agree with the new admin policy of what happened. This is Marlis, and I do want to say that that is what Christian advised, that we have this in our handbook because our enrollment agreement refers to our policies and the things in our handbook. So that's just where Kelly's coming from with that, and I would support what she's saying. Thank you, Mandy. We're glad you're with us. I thought this was a good document. Um, and then for, at the bottom where it says the reentry plan outlines initial protocols, it's understood to be a fluid document. That document, as well as any future revisions, shall be considered an addendum to the handbook. So, Vicki, I think that kind of addresses the fluidity of the reentry plan in the exact word of fluid. Uh, so I think we're in, in good shape there. So yeah, we also approve the reentry plan. Well, that's what I was going to ask if, if, if we could just go ahead and approve the reentry. Well, knowing that it is also yeah. fluid, because I, I hate to come back to you guys every time. Yeah. Well, we still have sure. We're changing this because of new guidance through the CDC. Right. Um, everything that's in there is. is pretty much about prevention protocols and things that we're going to add is um, I think the biggest concern parents have is understanding when my kid can come back to school and, right. and trying to kind of, and I'll probably even have, like I'm working on a, a single fact sheet that will kind of do a summary of the plan, but then also a, a fact sheet that shows your kids say if they had two or more symptoms or now they're saying if they've got one of the major symptoms, so now they have major symptoms that they're, they're walking through. Um, what do you do? And then based on what your provider tells you, you know, you're either going through one, one you know, either it's a non-COVID diagnosis, so you go into normal track of your normal reentry back to school. It's a test positive, here's your track. If you haven't been tested, but there isn't an alternative diagnosis but COVID, Here's your track and how many days, and so that, that parents are kind of aware of where that where that falls. And so those are some things that we're kind of tweaking to help parents understand that process because that's what's going to happen at the beginning. We're going to be like, oh, they can't come back. They're going to be trying to get their doctor to release them. You're going to have it's right. it's going to be. I think those are going to be the the, the the push and pull and the timeliness because obviously we want kids back as soon as they can, but we want to be careful. And then the nurse is trying to track. Who's got what? Who can be back? Who can't? And so, working through that process, and there's some things we're putting in place to try to help that. So, if the reentry plan could also be approved, that probably be that would be helpful too, which would include whatever verbiage um, we could change it to as part of the, the overall reentry plan. Where do you guys land on the recommended or strongly recommended? I think we were at strongly recommended, <laughs> and we can do that as one. Yes. That's one motion. Uh, and, yeah, and that is the, just visually, that's this document, right? That we've been looking at the back to school. I think we, this version is 717. So, uh, whatever, not, it does no published in July 2020, but that that's kind of when it was birthed. So, I think we're good on that. We'll just update. I mean, anything that I've done since we'll have an update. Okay. Other thoughts? Anything else? I'll take a step of motion. Oh. <laughs> okay. So I guess um, there, there's two pieces before I make it that step. There's two employee handbook changes that were proposed. Uh, one was the legal description of the, the COVID, COVID uh, liability description here. Yeah. And then there's a second um, changes on the bottom here, um, cleaning up some policy references. Uh, the policies will work on in September, but there is this verbiage that is going to be added um, to, is that just, is that just a high school handbook or what is that? So that's the employee handbook. Right. All right. Good. 
So then the, the okay. all right. I started the motion then. <laughs> Before we move the so the CDC also has some guidance online cohorting for students at, at the higher levels, you um, know, decrease exposure. Right. Um, things of that nature. Have those been added to that plan? The cohorting for what you got is in our general plan. We're talking as is cohorting as a strategy when where it's applicable, and then the principals have their division plans that they're working on with the them. First plan. So the cohort, the cohorting, Sharon's able to do that at, at her level. Fifth and sixth um, are able to cohort for quite a bit of it. Seven and eight, what they're looking at, kids start to do different, take different classes. So cohorting in that maybe looks like you kind of can cohort in your seating charts if you've got a lot of kids that have a similar schedule. Kind of cohort with your seating to where I taught my schedule about the same, so maybe there's fear for this. And so those teachers kind of coordinate in their seating charts that those kids are kind of grouped together in the same proximity in the seating chart. So, in other words, if he's positive for four classes that we had together, it was the same group instead of each class, he was around a different kid. So the cohorting is a little harder once kids start to spread out. So that's how that high High school, it's, it's pretty difficult. I mean, and even if we thought about what you do with um, like your seating chart for like cafeteria, because kids are going all different directions. And even, you know, they recommend you even have a seating chart in the cafeteria. We were talking about today, you're going to tell the, the high school, hey, this is your seat for just because you're trying to limit if this kid's positive. Well, at least for this week, they were all, they were around the same group. But in every other class they've been in, they've been around different. Kids. So the high school, it's it's kind of focusing on social the distance and not going to their walkers. So the cohort is that high school had an infection in the high school, we could effectively quarantine our entire high school. Well, what they would do is because they're masking, they would go into each class and if it's you, they'll look at your schedule and, and they'll look at the seating chart and they'll do the probably they'll say the six foot longer than fifteen minutes, and so it will definitely impact. You guys are outside of six, but they might might be okay. I don't care how they, how strict they stick to that. But it will be anybody that they were close contact with, or in, or there's close contact and direct contact. So Dustin hugged you, but even though he was staying six feet away before he hugged you, the hug would probably put him in close contact. So that's pretty much how it was thing we do. That's pretty much how that that would run. And there's really no way to prevent that except for the hand washing, social distancing, trying to limit where the kids are congregating at the walkers, and they're not doing that. We're even going to have kids kind of going one way, we're doing backpacks. Um, I mean, no, there's other things that, been, that we're just trying to do the best we can to space kids mass. out. Do what's that? The high school will be all masks. So. Yeah, because there, you know, there is a, a positive. Yeah, the masks will still, they'll still. They'll still. We're going to have the. Quarantine somebody. If, it, if I if I you came in here, I was positive. It's, the health department has told us that the mask won't matter. The mask won't. And in fact, they sent us something yesterday because different parts of the state they were communicating to schools that if the contact trace and there was close contact, but if they were masked, they would have to quarantine. Our, at least our health department told us that's yeah. not their understanding. The mask really doesn't mean anything. So we could, uh, so, but we're gonna, I guess it's a little bit of clear as to you know, how that's going to impact the, the high school level. Yeah, well, that's that's going to be every, everybody. Yep. Yeah, going to be the same, the same book. How will they okay. They're going to mask on the bus. The ball teams will be masking, but you know, even somebody on the on the ball team. That's probably that whole group. I mean, at least I know probably basketball every day yeah. center. Or if they travel together in you know, a sentence, and depending on when the sentence are, I think they can back trace so 48 hours prior to sentence is when they start counting. How are, how are we going to manage this? It's the individual specific plans. How are we communicating with those? Are they going to be a part of this pre entry plan? They'll be putting those division plans that are going to be sending out to parents so parents kind of understand what. 
what that what the overall claim looks like at the elementary level. Okay. And so that's building something that will So that so that's an addition but not related to the reading. That would be like their addendums to their handbooks as well. Okay. So if we approve the reentry plan, we're approving individual plans at the same time. I think you probably should go. They're still working through those with the teachers, but I think they're overall, for the most part, they're they're overall down. There'll be some tweaking kind of like with our plan. So but they're really just taking the, the main plan and just showing here's what social distancing looks like in elementary, here's what cohorting looks like. You know, right up in the years, what they're doing for that and liberty in the high school. But they're all based on the practices in the in the order. I would look at those more just informational, procedural. Here's what this is going to look like. We would use the word plan, but I don't know if I would put those where. Yes, you have to approve them because they're more these things procedurally what are being implemented in those areas. Right. So if it's just kind of procedural, but why are we trying to implement these things for the document that I'm handling? I'm not trying to be adversarial here, but just kind of, I mean, we're, we're taking that up. The attorney's asking us to you know, legally put this in here. The whole parents and you know, his family is accountable to adhering to the Re-entry plan. Like we're saying that it's just kind of a you know, procedural. This is what we're going to try to do. And uh, it, it, it sounds soft and so forth. But then once we read it here, it's pretty hard to legal binding language. So I'm a little bit. I think I think the purpose of the document is just saying you acknowledge this is what these are the steps the school is taking to keep your safe. I mean, I, and that's I, I look at it overall. That's what the acknowledgement is that hey, just know that. And I think because the other part is you get into. I think there was the idea that you have to have people sign off on something, and right. more just like it would be acknowledged in the enrollment agreement. Like these are the practices that are being taken for keeping people safe, and I acknowledge this is the case. So I I don't know. I'm not. I haven't looked. I guess I'm. Kind of see what you're saying, but I don't know what would be, the, what would you? I don't know if it needs to. I mean, I'm not going to you know, question what our our attorneys are saying, but I don't know. I, I question why that's needed in a uh, uh, you know, formally a uh, agreement to hold harmless or agreement as being uh, in terms of putting it in the handbook. Yeah. Kelly, were you, were you I was not a part of, I don't know if Carlos can say anything about this, but I was not a part of that. I, I think that basically what he's trying to say is that, that he's trying to get the parent to realize that sending their children to school is going to be a risk, and if their child gets sick, that they shouldn't be suing the school if their child gets sick at the school. I think is the overall intention of it. He felt fine with just the amendment to the handbook without being a special full pharmacy waiver. Yes, that's correct. That's correct. Okay. Carlos, are you still there? Can you hear us, Carlos? He's watching fireworks in the fresh water or something. I She's driving through Sturgis. She just texted me a few minutes ago and she hasn't. I've, so she may be just tied up. Here. I'll text her. She just texted me back. Hey, can you get All right. I've texted her. I mean, I do know that we had talked about whether or not it was going to be important to put in, to, to require a back to school packet, like a signed waiver. And that would, you know, literally just be like them signing this. And um, I guess legally, it's, 
And I, again, I didn't hear it straight, but I think my understanding from our list was that you cannot, it's not necessarily an actual binding thing. You can't hold them to it even if they sign it. And there's no way to prove whether or not the person got sick at your school or not. If so, having somebody actually sign something won't really help. No, we can't hear her. And I can't hear. She's trying to talk, but I can't hear, at least through my side. I know schools are doing waivers, but everybody also agrees that a waiver is right. 
might feel nice to have someone like you sign the gate agenda, but that doesn't change. Uh, that doesn't change you know, what people can still do. So and it's just outlining here's what we're going to be doing. Um, so I don't know if that's I don't know if that answers your question or I don't know if that's why you asked me. You are on speaker, but I was still having trouble following you because you're just a little, little but I think I think we're I think we're fine. Just as far as just the overall purpose of the of the document. You got a little clearer yeah, sound way better. Yes, you're much better. Yeah, go ahead. Just adding this 
language and we will be communicating that. So I think yes. that's, that's a standard. And just so you know, the, the board that the handbook will be posted in multiple places. Besides the initial announcement and the separate documentation they'll see, the parents have the handbooks in uh, the Fax Family Portal. It'll be on our website. It'll be on our dashboard. There's multiple places where it can be seen and uh, published. It's also on our uh, website right now. We have a banner that's common attention to it on our website. So that's how we communicate it. Because I, I think the community is sensitive to everybody, like you said, that other schools are their plans and rolling them out. They're making, you know, they're making those known, and so we're we're able to do that in with this update. So, okay. Anything else for Marlis while we have her in a good in a good phone zone? Can you stop somewhere to get out to have a clear signal? Yeah, I was having trouble at the beginning, and I had you on. And so I switched you to my ears, so that's why. Oh, okay. I'm just trying to I don't think anybody has any questions, so you can go back to the motorcycle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're going to have to investigate, so we're going to have to Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. Thank you. 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 as a board feel that this addendum needs to be made to the handbook based on the recommendation. Yeah. All right, I have a question for the secretary. I made a motion that sounded like this. <laughs> okay. So I would potentially move to adopt this um, the proposed guidance for the, the proposed legal disclaimer for the Corona 19 virus guidance, uh, which references the fluid school reentry plan and the board's desire to require masks for grades 5 through 12 and strongly recommend masks um, for all elementary students. I'll second that. <laughs> Matt, do you feel that that uh, aren't you with the backing of the board yet? Uh, you know, no, I think that's fine. It's on the menu. It was required five through twelve, and then strongly recommended. Recommended. Strongly recommended. Yeah. Okay. So, so without the parent discretion, or without without the parent discretion, it was the only. Yeah. So, you think that's appropriate for yes. having this in? I think that was. Right. I second the proposed motion. You got your gear up. You're in the second. I had my finger on the button. It was my turn. <laughs> the problem, Vicki, is that was just a proposed motion. <laughs> Question. So it's a question motion. Yes. Because that motion, if, if we're made, would yeah. sound like it. All right. So I move that we adopt yes. the Corona 19 virus um, verbiage here into the handbook, including the reentry plan in July, requiring face coverings for grades 5 through 12, and strongly recommending face coverings for fourth grade students. I second. <laughs> you write my words. Take a breath. Oh, okay. And why don't you take a breath? All in favor, signal uh, by saying aye. 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 And uh, well, Matt, Matt, not officially, not officially, but this though, he is not voting tonight. So, okay. Thank you, everyone. Matt, yeah, hopefully that that is. I think it is. Uh, okay, where in the world are we? In my notes. Okay, um, we're still kind of. We're still talking about. Did you want to add anything about just in terms of the meeting, uh, the family meeting that we did, the COVID nineteen meeting? We're kind oh, of, yeah. Um, that at the PIP hours were kind of in. Right. COVID. So.
just so, just an update for those who might not know, we had, I think Brian Stone was 200 probably online that attended, and then probably I don't know, 40 or 50 maybe that were in person. And then what, what I did, I went and kind of went through the chat and the comments and just kind of looked at if there was you know, a common theme that maybe I could just kind of individually um, communicate with those folks. And, and one thing that came out when the, you know, the because what, when people are here in different districts, they're, they're hearing, okay, Springfield had their plan that, that since then has, has come out. So you've got this partial, and then you hear that we're hybrid, you hear that we're all virtual or virtual option. And so in our chat, we had some folks say, hey, dude, like a, we're talking about a virtual option, and hey, that would be great. And so what I did, the, the folks that had mentioned that I, I emailed them specifically and kind of explained. Springfield or other public schools, if they're doing a virtual option, like Springfield's got, I want to say that like, say like 5,000 students that have elected for total virtual. And so the Springfield has launched, they have an online program. So they're not taking a teacher and that teacher is teaching virtual in the classroom. They have teachers that are just doing, that just do the online. Um, and so if someone's choosing that option, that's what they're having at Nixa. I think had a very high percentage of, of students families that elected for virtual, I want to say it was like 500 or maybe it was a big chunk. And so they're having to realign their staff. Um, and some schools have, have purchased seats through launch to do the virtual, they have no virtual option. So for us, that's to, to kind of say, okay, base teaching, you're going to have 20 kids in your class, but then you're going to have all these other kids that want to do online and you're trying to do both. On top of a new year trying to implement the COVID procedures, processes, and so for us, that's not that's not a good option. Now, if if very specific health related, maybe there's something that we can have a conversation about and work with someone due to doctor's own that says, hey, due, due to my health, I can't be in that environment, especially if it's an older student that the, the online can work, that would probably be the rare exception. Um, and so so I emailed those folks just to let them know that the a virtual option right now, right? That's just not realistic. Even though we are prepared and, and principals and teachers are prepared that knowing the threshold for a student being out is going to be a lot lower. And so we're going to have to have a virtual, so to speak. So when a student is out and they have to be out for so many days that we are still engaging them in the classroom through use of technology where they are, they are in, in the classroom. So there'll be some of that taking place as it is, but to fully give some of the option that that's what I want to do. And in, in, in general, with, with folks paying tuition, they want the experience of their child being in class. And so I kind of, what I did was just email those folks individually just to kind of explain what, what really that means as far as virtual and why that right now for us would be something. I know I think that we would do, but I think we're going to learn through kind of dipping or kind of in the shallow end of, of the virtual learning, whether it's for individual students who have been out. And that's, I think, something that's come up with parents and my kids out. How are they going to be able to still engage somehow virtually? And yes, we're, we're making a, a, arrangements for that with, with technology that we're getting CARES money, devices, you know, all students getting a device, as well as uh, technology to have an iPad where it's on the teacher, not recording the whole classroom, because that's a whole other set of, of logistics if you've got people at home watching all the students for a class, um, whether it's privacy or, you know, just from being a teacher, feeling you're under a microscope all the time, but, you know, like the, the device being up to the teacher where they're recording their lecture. And so, so anyway, so I think there will be parts of that that I, I think out of that could come, you know, a, a potential market in the future for folks that want online options, but maybe want that flexibility, but still being a part of a school community and not just doing something distant. Um, like liberty where they don't really have that connection so so anyway but overall i thought i thought parents even if they had questions and would like to see something a certain way i, I everybody's been very supportive of that um i'm looking at, at the possibility of a survey that would just help us gauge how our parents and our kids are thinking about coming back to school just to get a temperature as we're kind of preparing to to, to take care of our kids social emotionally spiritually um you know, are our kids are they excited about coming back? Are they anxious? Are they? And so I think that would give us some feedback, and also let the parents give us some, some feedback there. But we wouldn't be asking in a survey, "Do you want two day a week?" Versus, you know, I mean, like we're spring. That's just not an option. 
for us. And uh, and I think the other part of this, the, the whole being ready to, to pivot if we have to, that's not something we want to. Um, but I would say from the health department, um, questions that folks have asked, what would it take for us to have to go virtual? So the health department's given some different metrics they, they've thrown out there in terms of just shutting down like a sports team or an organization that use the threshold of 10%, like 10% of your soccer team test positive, you probably need to shut it down for a couple of weeks. Um, and then the metric they use for school-wide would be, I think Kendry, it's like 5% on a one day total, if you're at 5% or if it's over two days, you're at 4% or 3%. And so that's in a general metric, but a lot of this could come down to what part of your population gets hit. I mean, the goal is that you can still operate with pockets of kids out. Um, classroom with a positive case is pretty much in the elementary setting, pretty much going to take that class out for two, for two weeks um, with, with, with quarantine. But uh, those are just some metrics in terms of what it would take to, to close down if we had to. Um, that or just widespread community in terms of what, what's happening so, but, uh, but that was glad like you brought that up because we, we did respond to, to folks about that. But, um, so, a, a survey I, I think would be helpful um, and give another chance to communicate um, some additional information, but just to kind of get a couple of people to back to school. So, maybe not an open ended. What do you think about masks? No, I mean, you know, <laughs> I mean, you want to ask questions that would be helpful, or you don't want to ask questions that you're not prepared to share. What do you think about it? you want to do virtual learning? And then everybody says, well, I'd like it, we're not going to do it. So, <laughs> <laughs> right. You know, you don't want to ask questions that aren't going to be where, where we're headed. So right. I do think there's some people. Yeah, well, you get it. Yeah, we have, we have the, so, quote, emergency virtual learning will be like we did in the spring. I mean, we can have that, that can happen. Right. But, you know, we're not going to entertain secondary virtual learning like to, this year. Platform on the horizon. A couple of parents have asked, I don't know what launches, but if launches the online learning, is that an option that would be available with new evidence somewhere down the line? Or would that be for our own? Yeah. Yeah. Somewhere yeah. No, I think that's definitely. Say 2021, yeah. but. And basically, what launches is thinking about Liberty Online, that's Liberty's curriculum, Liberty's print. Launches local curriculum development for Springfield. It's Missouri standards, local control, but it's it. an online platform, and then other schools can can participate or purchase seats. Uh, right. But it's still all it's still local, so that's that's right. what some sort of to be able to answer the parents. Yeah. and I and I think a lot of Christian schools are finding out that that's that's kind of a, a market that just people have been at home and had that experience in some ways. You know what? Kind of like this part of it, but it would still be enough if I could that. And so. Uh, what I think you'd have to look at in terms of, especially for older students, is the impact of mission and eligibility, especially if it's voluntary. Now, they've made accommodations now where if people are doing online, they can still participate, but it's because of the current circumstances. Now, moving forward, if those restrictions were in place and someone just wanted to do that, I think there would be mission guidelines that people would have to weigh that out if they still want their student to be able to participate. But it's definitely something that I think could be a market. Especially I can, I can see that market take off again if it comes down to no large gatherings, right? Right. We can then to more parents than that disability. Right. right. We're getting used to being home. So, yeah. not, my, not my first launch. I don't know. Yeah. Is launch a paid? Do you pay for that as a, as a say, sprinkle poet? Do they have to? If you're in sprinkle, it's just say it doesn't, you don't pay for that. Okay, thank you for that update. Also, um, I told you COVID-19 committee report had a few little few tentacles to it. The final one would be hip hours. I don't know if you had a chance to see. Uh, Marlis had made a recommendation for us. We asked her to um, include that if she would in her report. Um, just kind of looking at hip hours, getting back to school opportunities uh, or not to to get those devoured, though, I believe Jeff got all of his tonight in in the plans that we laid out for him. But we're, we're 
and I think what, what Marla's, uh, what we talked about just briefly and, and she included is that there is a reality. We do have a lot of opportunity to serve out in, you know, parking team, whatever we want to call that, our, our parking lot greeters, whatever we're going to end up calling that traffic control, any of that that I know several of the team are working on. But there is an awareness that there will not be as many opportunities to get into the building to serve um, for our volunteer, for our parents as volunteers to get their PIP hours. So um, Marlis's recommendation was that we, uh, that the board consider tonight um, is that we reduce that number down to 24 hours um, and know that we, we really need to uh, probably include in that letting our administrative team have discretion because there may be other reductions needed potentially just depending on we, we just don't want it to be a burden for people yet there is a blessing in serving you know we've all done that and do that and so uh, we don't want to shut everybody down at all but there are just so many things that you just can't get right now we just can't get but he's looking at it as a quarterly right quarterly basis. sure and i think we're going to have essential volunteers um kitchen's got to have people um we're going to be looking at to really help the administrators having teams and Glenda's looking at um, car line not just you know out there but just that they are trained and how the car line is supposed to run they're out there at those different locations which frees up the principles especially early on that we can all be watching and going around okay what's working what's not and not be locked into an actual supervision that you feel like i need to be somewhere else but having parents do that so that's going to be that's going to be important so that's a good um you know shout out for those who might be watching if they want to be involved maybe where their child's pick up drop off um, would be, be a part of that be a part of that team that they can rotate that so and then there's hours this coming wednesday Right. So, but yeah, reducing it, looking at eight per quarter, so I can subtract eight, so we can end up in twenty-four. So, I think twelve four hours. That's two member household or one member household. How's it going? Normally, it's like half as many for a single household. Right. So it was forty for a full for two two member, and then twenty for a single. Yes. Or she's going to go across the board at 24. Probably still, do that. I think you'd still call me broke-rated. Yeah, based on this. I would say that makes sense. What she did not have a quarter. Four county order. Yeah. 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 Or how do you look you can still get hours right take it away you got and, and i guess what we can do in this motion is we can set is we can just apply the same formula to to that seat because i i'm disconnected from it by a year so i can't remember what the single is half, it's yeah, half so, half. so, so we could we could i think that would make sense it's probably assumed in, in what she was sharing but i don't see anything specific in the in her in her verbiage, so I think. I think you just want like what you essentially need to solve a character care help you and are not really needed. Right. So I don't know, maybe we can do that too. I don't know if it's your verbiage, but. Yeah. So in the elementary end, there's a lot of like, and some of us who help the teacher, but maybe that's not essential right now until you get further in. I don't know. Like, right, yeah. Right now, I mean, we're not having like TAs or not going up like high school kids that right. go up there. We're not doing any crossing. We're just going to be limiting so so much people that are in the building. It's right now. I would think it would make a parent comfortable too, knowing that, you know, it's limited to what needs to be done. You know, you don't have a lot of incoming. Right. Yeah. They can use that for money too when they buy things. So, like, we were thinking about when you do, like, before you go to a teacher appreciation or something, maybe once a quarter, you might ask parents to do something and then they can apply that to their pay hours. So, it's like $8 right. they purchase would be more than that. So, if they financially so help. Opportunities help along the way sure. like that. Rather than just writing a check, you're actually yeah. helping with a gift or yeah. whatever that might be. That's great. Are the thoughts on fifth hours? You know that point trade at the gas station that at least points people take 
and I'll try to have those three there. Do they know that I always for to send extras to whoever? That's what they have to Just a little extra hours in there. My, my only concern dropping the requirement before the school year is even started is that it's almost promoting not looking for the opportunity, hoping that the hours will continue to decrement quarter by quarter as we go along. Whereas if we leave the requirement now and we come back and revisit, as we did in last spring, sure enough, at the end of the semester, we revisited how the year had gone and, and made an adjustment. Um, perhaps we had a little more interest in getting hours, you know, looking for the opportunity yeah. going out of, not out of your way, but not just assuming your expectation is going to go away, but being diligent about finding an opportunity to volunteer and serve to, to donate or donate in kind, whatever it is. Yeah. And then quarter from that, we could look at it and say, okay, should we tune our, our full year protection yet? Or even if we just wait until the second semester to make that determination based sure on the first semester is coming. Yeah. And I don't know if we're getting are we getting a lot of questions right now about I'm just raring to go to get back in and start serving? I think we've got a few. I, mean, I know tomorrow's feeling like we probably need to uh, to answer that question in terms of right. Hey, you're telling us we're not you know going to be limited in what we're going to be able to do. So and, and what they're probably seeing is that they would have to end up paying. Is that correct? Like if they don't get their time and they've got to write a check, is that do you think that's probably that or they'll that? just have just the lack of opportunity, right? Which, which, I mean, I guess, technically. Yeah, right. I think that the opportunities will just be a little creative. You know, like you have a, a virtual program, if you came to that, that would be okay. That one. We'll have some sure. And a lot of problems looking at outdoor things that you want to decide, right? So, whether that is like what Jeff said, whether you made a decision to reach tonight or to let the folks know, hey, we're going to. Exactly. The, that's on our radar, and yeah, we're going to be able to do that. Yes. Uh, yes. Yeah. 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 I think that's what Marlos wanted to do that hey, we're yeah. here that, and, and here's one way to look at it without it being, you don't go, Marlos didn't want to go way out and do it and yeah. say, we'll cut it right out there. Right. Um, when it might not be the case. Well, just, and, hey, and I think we should have signed up PIP hours for the financial equivalent there of as part of our budget. Right. And if our enrollment is down, it's important that the parts of our budget that we depend on um, do come to fruition in this sure. different financial year. So, right. I right. just, I know there's a time commitment of it, and it's going to be a little bit harder to do it, but we've right. got to go from A to B. Right. Well, if you look at last year, we cut it down, you can see that with people. Yeah, we, what's going on. Right. We've acted on that already to reduce yeah. it. And, and I think I think, yeah, maybe giving an opportunity to be creative about what what opportunities may may come, may promote, you know, oh well I didn't realize that was an opportunity. Well I'll, I'll take that. Yeah. It's at thirty two right now, right? So that would be eight dollars worth or eight hours worth of quarter, right? It's ten. It's ten dollars an hour. I mean, the hours break down to the data yeah. 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 if you do it that way. Do, right. do we know, related to athletics, I know concessions, we seem to always do concessions back in the day. Probably looking that might be limited to how you're just doing free pack like for just what I was thinking. I think that's what a lot of schools are looking for, right? Yeah. You just got a speaker. No, that's not like I'm ready to play golf all that. <laughs> No, it's because I worked so hard last year, figuring all this out, and now I can't even do it again. Okay, well, we will we'll table that. That's just my recommendation. Yeah, yeah, unless anybody has any, of, yeah. any opposition to that, I think that's a good, good take. We'll and always come back to it, and if there's something that, that rises to the top in a month, we could, if we needed to take action, we could do that. Uh, and it gives us a chance to kind of see what we hear from, from our families. And but to plug the parent teams and do uh, remodeling, yeah. my wife's serving on that. I can make sure everybody there are plenty of volunteer yeah. opportunities. So there you go. go as we begin to launch this week. Excellent. And well, like I was saying, we're going to have all kinds of things to do there. Yes, the virtual right. banquet. Yeah. 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 Hey, yeah. 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 could be a whole new whole new thing. Only world of opportunities. Glenda's, Glenda's world. That's awesome.
Okay, so <laughs> I guess I guess we're we went old, new, and now we're back to new. Uh, item number two under new business is our board officer elections. Um, in case in case you're not aware, we do that in August. I was gone last year. That happened. So I don't remember. All I remember that happened is. Vice Chair. So I can tell me those of you that are not here. Uh, sorry. We're <laughs> just that you're here this year. What's that? You noticed that here? Yeah. I won't be. I won't be. I won't be the Vice Chair. Right. So, um, in, case, in case you missed it, and thank you for lots of kind comments and texts and so fun. No harsh, thank you. Thankfully, I uh, appreciate all your your understanding. I, we are a team, and, and our our decision as a family to um, to step away from the board is, I think, I expressed in our note. That, I mean, we are. I just wish we would have gotten here earlier to the covenant, you know, back in the day. But the Lord, the Lord knew when we get here, and and so from eighth grade. We, been a part of this place, a great priest, and uh, so we're we're excited to uh, lot, just a lot going on in our world, and, and uh, we are excited to buy a house in the middle of all this chaos as well, because we've been in an apartment, and our office is in an apartment as well, so it's been interesting during this season. But uh, the Lord has provided, and, and so uh, I am full on as a business owner and trying to keep up with my wife who is uh, an accountant to him. Just trying to do the groundwork and keep up with her. But anyway, I appreciate your, your understanding because I, I recognize there's a there's a burden that we all carry. You know, if, if Dustin's carrying the weight of something as a board, we're all kind of there to help, and vice versa, all around the tables. And so I know it does create a, a void um, in, the, in not only the vice chair position, but just on the board. Uh, so we what will. Again, because I and it's been a while. I wasn't here last year to be a, a part of the uh, of the elections, but uh, we would we would do the uh, chair position first. Um, and I think Matt, I don't know that he or that he broadcasted to to the entire group. I guess he did in his email. He's definitely willing to uh, you know, to to continue serving in that role, um, but. I don't know if the word incumbent is, I guess it is the right word, uh, though we though we do have uh, an incumbent in that in that spot. It is a part of our, our policy that if someone else were interested in even that position, um, that is that's certainly great if we can make, make a decision based on that. But I know Matt uh, Matt expressed that he would gladly be willing to uh, put himself out there again to serve. Um, so we'll we'll kind of take that position first, and then we can deal with the vice chair position. And uh, honestly, just quickly, uh, Jeff helped bring to mind in terms of my position uh, stepping away from the board. In general, we don't we have nine with me gone, and nine would be our minimum. Uh, so the board wouldn't have to, if I'm counting that correctly, on the board. I look again, Kelly. You can double check. Yeah, right, yeah, nine, right. yeah, nine is our minimum, and I think we are, according to our attendance record, we are we are there with me with me gone, uh, and that again would be at the end of September is when is when I'll be. Uh, but it is it will still be a vacant board position, so we could, that's right. We could appoint somebody. Absolutely. Else. Yeah. So so that would be for uh, that would be for the duration of the, the rest of my term, which would be. August of 2022. Yeah, we looked at that today. So anyway, got got ahead of myself a little bit there, but just I had that on my mind today that we might we might definitely need to fill that spot. But in counting the simple math, Jeff helped me uh, this evening. We, we would not have to necessarily do that. So um, I would just open it up to the floor to discuss the chair. Was it that handle the nominations for the chair? This is the first year I don't have to do it because oh. Matt's not here and okay. so he can handle that. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And then since he's out of his he can yeah. handle that. Seriously, it says. <laughs> it's, 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 it's always different. Every time we do this, there's something, oh, somebody's going to <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. 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 Ye
I nominate Matt Martin for the board chairman. Second. Okay, any other discussion? All in favor of Matt Martin? To, uh, and we see Vicki already thumbing up. <laughs> Matt Martin as our, she continuing as our chair for 2022 or 2020, 2021, I guess it would be for the next year. All in favor of that, say aye. 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 Any opposed, same sign. Okay. Thank you so much, Matt. If you're on, I don't know who you are. Congratulations. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I can hear a rude Either way. Either way. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I will say I will say this about Matt, and, and I think I don't other other chairmen and chairwomen have done this this chair role that, that he fills, I'm sure, differently and, and everybody brings their own flavor to it. But uh, today was a great example for me because I knew when he called to say, hey, I'm not going to be able to make it. My, I was like, hurry up and tell me that because I want to get your notes because uh, I know you're already preparing. So he he's a he's a tireless uh, prep guy and, and does a great job, obviously, leading us and, and has done I've been able to be a part of um, lots of discussion with him and know his heart and know his family. Obviously, we all do, and excited to excited to see him back back with us in that in that spot for the new year. So um, now we can take care of the vice chair uh, position, and I believe I don't know that that I. I was not directly getting all of the responses, but I, I do believe several either said yes or no. They they would like their name to run or not. Um, and I don't know. I don't know how we exactly how we want to to handle that. I think that I'm unless I I tried to have a a note on that as we were going throughout the day. Um, I I believe I know Bay. You responded that you're going to serve. Um, and I, let me say this real quick. I'll pause for a second. I think. Kelly brought this up um, the other day. I think going forward, um, we we talked about it briefly, um, headed into whatever next time we would do elections, and, and time kind of got away from us. But the, the nominating committee is in position to help um, ask the question: Hey, Dustin, would you like to serve with Robert? Would you? And, and we facilitate that. But uh, time, COVID. And, here we are. So I think going forward, our thought was to kind of put a note on the calendar, maybe for June this next year, and and maybe be ahead of that in terms of talking about uh, who would like to allow the name to run for for those positions. So um, apologize that that it was a slight hit rush and done electronically, but Matt definitely got word out to everybody. So and I know Jeff, you were able to respond. Jeff responded in Bay that they uh, allowed their names to run. Is there is there anyone else that, um, that we don't have a, we don't have a parliamentarian here, but somebody slap me if I'm saying anything wrong or whatever we need to do here. If anybody else would like to allow their names to run, I know Lisa, you shared you wouldn't be able to do that. Um, and yes, but did you? And Lance responded, I think. Not, I responded, though. Not able to do that. So um, is anybody else? If, uh, anybody else had the passion to get your name into the hat, into the ring here, uh, to, to serve on that spot. Okay. Uh, I penciled, this is definitely not good parliamentary procedure, I penciled a note to Matt that I never got over to him, but do we typically have, do we typically have those who are nominated and stepping out for the vote, or have we, did we just do that here in the ring last year? I don't remember. I don't, I don't know what we do with it. Everybody was just that came to mind today. So I just I would like to nominate the illustrious and capable Mr. Ben Howard for the vice chairman. Oh, we have a we have a nomination slash is that a, mo a motion nomination? Yeah, uh, it's a nomination for now. For <laughs> nomination for the eight to serve as vice chair. Um, Anybody, anybody have any challenges or questions or comments about that nomination? No, I have a second. Okay, we have a second from Dustin. All in favor of Bay? Is there discussion I can leave? No, I think you said right there. I'd like to move that we close nominations for Vice Chair. It's been a lively corner. It's been a lively corner. Yeah, but it's pretty slick. Well played. 
Well done. Hello, hi. Okay, well, we have a nomination motion and second uh, now by Dustin for Bay to serve as our vice chairman for the new school year. So, all in favor of that? Say aye. 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 Any opposed? Congratulations, sir. <laughs> Congratulations. I'll give you the book. All right. <laughs> Yes. Ah, uh, this is just one. yeah. You know, there used to be a month where we had a full lunch meeting. We haven't do that anymore because of the yeah. Government. So you're especially so, get that. Yeah, yeah, I I will say that has been a. I feel like that's been the strength of, of helping at least me understand a little further kind of what we're. I mean, we all get the board packet, and you know that's I I do my best to, to make sure I'm ready. And, but uh, we've had an opportunity over the last year to kind of. Get together with Matt and Marlis just to quickly download, you know, what might need to be included on the agenda, and hopefully that's been a help to them. So uh, Matt and Bay will, will be able to serve in that role to uh, even bring questions or thoughts that you might have to that meeting quickly. And again, that's just to kind of get the, the bullet points ready, and that really is helpful. Um, so thank you, thank you, Bay, for your willingness to serve. Yeah, thank you for your willingness to serve. And. Uh, for nominating Bay as well, and for closing the nominations. <laughs> you, did a lot. you did a lot of that. So, um, any discussion, we can do that now about about adding anybody to the board, um, just with my vacancy. Uh, my, my thought would be if we if we do want to do that, then we would try to move fairly quickly, you know, just to, to get them get them on, on board. Uh, May look a little different in terms of, I guess, vetting, you might say, unless we are back. So uh, that has that has sort of been going. So congratulations. Being, being at the minimum at such a time that somebody could be sick out there for weeks on end, I would recommend probably at least start. We're at the gas station, a lot of time that several people could be out and get a time. Right. So. I concur. Um, I think that given the nature of how we may or may not be up capacity to do our virtual option now, still will be largely participate right. virtually, so that's just another thing to yeah. keep in mind. But um, I know we made it as far as to uh, the nomination committee, I believe you're chairing these right. We had three or four folks um, that we had already right. nominated, but um, our views as a board and needs could be dramatically different now than they were as we were trying to yeah. plan um, for those additional officers or board members last year. Why someone who's already been on the board? Why would you go through the interview process? Yeah. As I read the policy, um, we can appoint anyone as long as they accept an interview or not. Uh, That's not right. So. With previous members, they have to have been gone for a year. That's right. the only. If they're serving. Yeah, they were serving yet. Yeah, right. So um, I may invite her, you know, we may all take off and try on it and see what needs we see for the board. And then maybe in the September meeting, we table that as, a, as an item discussion of if we have whatever those recommendations are. Right. And maybe from then, um, perhaps even on our nomination committee to see the candidates that we have, if that's what we all feel is the need is, or maybe help us find some new, um, new, new folks to help meet with it. Yeah. Yes. Like that's and great. might wish for us to get another medical member up to the board or not. Another medical team member, medical person. Yeah, it would certainly be helpful if you, you know, if somebody is sick and we, we've been in that voting situation right. or for one time or another. Right. Um, well, I think you have a good point with the virtual. Yeah. yeah, depending on the other. There's probably the risk to be just in the middle. So if we have three good candidates that were right, any of those would be valid. Yeah. I mean, it's 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 yeah, that's great. And I don't know, I don't know for sure. Um, you haven't talked to the medical subcommittee, but they, you know, they have, many of them have stepped up and been fairly active to help. And anytime you have that kind of Participation that that might be an opportunity. I guess we are broadcasting now as well. If, there, if anybody listening is interested, <laughs> interested, interested in contact. Me. 
Yeah, we can. We can uh, yeah, just email me and I will get their names to the nomination committee. So that's ksourcy at newcovenant.net. We're going through this uh, legal adoption of the handbook. I was wondering maybe somebody that interpreted legal writing has very well. Yes. And that would be an area of opportunity. Oh, good. All right. Any other questions? Yes. Yeah. 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 Well, right. we have to fill the yeah, open. Yeah, we can the half that. years that you still have on your term, but right. we're still at that point. Because we were going to add before before we kind of shut down last year, we were going to add a board member, right? Um, because we had nobody coming on term, so we were looking to build right. this. And are we required? Can we add a board member mid year, or does it need to be at the beginning of the school? I would add the bylaws again. Can answer that? Or would we still be? I mean, we still get Todd's position for 2022. I should, right? Yeah. But you and mentioned then, perhaps there's more than yeah, that right. we would want to address. Right. I, know, I was questioning if that was possible in the first time. Yeah. We did the work process last year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, and just as we look ahead, I don't know that yeah, I don't know that there'll be a season where we don't continue interview because we said Kendra will be one year away, right? We're down to terms. And uh, so that yeah, so that'll be a that team will be active, I'd say, from this point forward, working on new new members of the board. So, okay, well, yeah, definitely. Let's let's be praying that the board will help give us direction on that and bring people to mind, and yeah, we'll get that we'll get that back onto on the agenda. They can bring that to the meeting. The right. agenda meeting. There you go. First item. And I also bequeath to you the devotion schedule, so you can also. Uh, be you know do do your new vice chairman there. Just sign up today to yes. uh, build that calendar tonight for the next year. It'll bless it. <laughs> That's awesome. Bay doesn't want to have anything. Bay can do everyone and do fantastic, but it's nice to it's nice to sure. spread that love, right? So <laughs> <laughs> he can handle it. He can handle it. Yeah. If you do, if you do make that happen. Got the blessing for sure on. on I already have a arrangement. Okay. The arrangement often comes in a pyrex dish. Yeah. I'm not sure. Oh, that's, 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 the that's, that's the arrangement. <laughs> so you go old school. Everybody gets the devotion. I'll let you know the secret. Yeah. <laughs> Good stuff. Um, and I think we are, have made our way to the end of our open session. Yeah. Here we are. Eight thirty-seven. So. Um, we will wrap up that portion. Thank you, everyone, for uh, being with us online. And let's, where are we here?